Don't you hate it when you buy a concert ticket online and they sting you with hidden fees? They advertise a ticket for $40, but when you go to pay, it's $40 for the ticket, another 10 for a service fee, plus another $5 for the convenience of printing it out. That last one always gets me. And unfortunately, buying a home is no different. If you're buying a home for 500,000, I guess like the ticket, you'd think that's all you have to pay. But there's a whole bunch of hidden fees that go along with it. In fact, these additional fees can cost between 12 to $24,000 or more for a $500,000 property. And if you're not prepared for these costs, they can really throw a spanner in the works and leave you scrambling for a few extra thousand dollars to make sure the deal goes through. So in this video, we're gonna show you a rundown of all the hidden costs you're gonna have when you're buying a home and what to look out for. Before we get started, if you find this helpful in any way, do me a little favor and hit that like button or leave a comment below. Just a little gesture like that can make a huge difference to the channel. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button below. Thanks you guys, it really means a lot to us. So let's dive in. All right, we're gonna break this down into three stages. Number one, the fees you need to pay before you sign the contract. Number two, the fees you pay during the home loan and finance application process. And three, the fees you're gonna pay after you buy the property, after settlement. So let's get started. Let's look at the fees you pay before you actually get the home loan. The first is buyer's agent's fees. So if you're getting help with finding the property, a buyer's agent is a person you're gonna use. Now you're gonna to need to take into account their fees and unfortunately they're not cheap. Buyer's agent fees can vary and it depends on the agent, but you're looking at paying an engagement fee in advance plus a percentage of the purchase price once you buy the property. Now this can range from 10 to $20,000 or more depending on the buyer's agent you use and depending on the property purchase price. The good news is that it's a once-off fee. The next fee is for building and pest reports. Building and pest reports look at the structural soundness of the house. They actually check if there's not pests sort of climbing through the walls and making sure your house isn't riddled with termites and white ants. Now, technically this is optional and in many cases, real estate agents will supply you with a building and pest report that they've obtained for the sale process. And there's a couple of different ways they can do this. I've seen a couple of recent cases, Nathan, where they'll charge you $50 to view the report. It's pretty common in Sydney and New South Wales where you'll pay 50 bucks, you get to have a look under the kimono, look at the report, and if you're successful and buy the property, they actually charge you the $500 for the full report. And for this reason, I think it's essential that you get your own building and pest report. There's a clear and obvious conflict of interest if you use a building and pest report that's been provided to you from the real estate agent. Yeah, as we've covered in videos before, you've got to remember the real estate agent is acting on behalf of the seller. Their job is to get the high sale price for the seller and not get you the best deal and protect you if there's issues with the properties. We strongly suggest you get your own report from an independent certified building and pest inspector to make sure you don't get left with a lemon of a property. Typically a building inspection report for a four bedroom home can cost anywhere from four to $500 and a pest inspection two to $300. Now you can save a few hundred dollars by getting these reports combined by a building and pest inspector and that usually costs anywhere from five to six hundred dollars but they are worth every penny and then some as you've seen from videos before i can say that billion pest reports have genuinely saved me on at least five times from buying complete dumps of properties one of the properties i had had concrete cancer another had issues with flooding water leaking through the walls another had termites in the tree at the back another had evidence of old damage in the roof it's crazy. Any of these issues could have cost me tens of thousands of dollars to fix. And I would have missed them completely hadn't I got the building pest report done. As another benefit, this is one of the few hidden costs of buying a property that will actually pay for itself. If the inspection finds a few small and easily fixable issues in the report, you can actually use that to renegotiate and potentially get a discount from the vendor. Now you will need to pay for a building and pest report for each property that you're considering buying, so keep that in mind. Legal costs. Now this is your solicitor and conveyancing. You'll need to pay a legal professional or conveyancer to help you with the buying process. Now they'll conduct title searches or strata reports on your behalf and help you review the contract and arrange settlement details. If you're buying an auction, you'll need to engage a solicitor or conveyancer before you bid. If you're purchasing by private treaty, so that just means if you make an offer rather go an auction, then you can engage a solicitor or conveyancer during the cooling off period. In general, 
conveyances charge a flat fee, while solicitors commonly charge by the hour. With the amount paid depending on how complex your purchase is, and also depending on the state. States like Queensland, even if you have templated contracts, whereas in Sydney it can get more complicated. The approximate cost is between $1,000 to $2,000 depending on the searches conducted. Your solicitor or conveyance will tell you which searches they recommend and which are optional. From past experience, we really recommend avoiding one-person operations. Your solicitor or conveyance will need to attend settlement for you. In some cases, they'll physically get a check from your bank and give it to the seller's bank and hand it over at settlement. So if they're on holidays or sick, it can cause some delays or issues with settlements. Strider reports. Strider inspection reports are another essential part of the buying process if you're buying a unit, apartment, or townhouse. Your solicitor or conveyancer will let you know if you need to obtain one of these reports. Now, in these reports, they provide important information about the status of the Strider scheme or body corporate. This includes the ownership and voting rights, the structural or building defects, planned or previous major works, quarterly levies or proposed special levies, sinking funds, forecasts, strata scheme and insurance, pet policies, compliance documents, and disputes or breach in bylaw. You definitely wanna pay attention to the special levies. These are payments over and above the normal strata fees and used to fund a new facility, new service, or most commonly in my experience, large maintenance projects. So if there's something that's gone wrong in the building and there's unexpected costs like water leaking, then they'll raise a special levy. So look out for that. It can be an unexpected cost that can be a few thousand dollars in some cases. And if the departing homeowner hasn't paid their share of special levies before selling, then the new incoming owner becomes liable for this. This means you, you'll need to pay this. And as some of you might know, when I was buying my first home, I almost ended up walking into property that had $9,000 of special levies that I'd need to pay. So definitely get a strata report. And if you do need to pay for one, they usually cost between $250 to $350. Unfortunately, as with building and pest reports, you're gonna need to pay for a strata report for each property that you're looking at buying. Fees that you need to pay once you've secured your home loan. Once you've found the right home and secured a contract to sale, there's gonna be some extra fees that you need to pay during the home loan application and settlement process. First up, borrowing fees. Some lenders will charge you fees as a part of the home loan application. These fees can range between five to $600. In some cases they're waived, in some cases they can be higher, but they do include loan application and establishment fees. Now some lenders will charge you an initial drawdown for the loan. Documentation preparation fees, Lenders may charge you for this to prepare your home loan contracts before the approval. Even in some cases, lenders like ING actually charge you a re-documentation fee. If you had, say, a property that you found, they've approved your loan, they've done the loan contracts, got it all ready, and then you've had to pull out for some reason. If they have to go back again, do the documents again for your second property that you found, they'll sometimes charge you an extra fee. So just look out for that. Bank valuation fees. These are usually waived but if you need a valuation, the cost can vary from anywhere from $220 to $1,000. Like Nathan said, they're generally waived. In some cases, banks will charge you if you're buying a unique property, maybe something on acreage, something regional, something that's really expensive. So Nate, for your next $10, $20 million home, you may have to pay a fee. Come on, come on, come on, get in there. Get in there. <laughs> Other fees. Annual fees can cost up to $400 a year. Discharge fees. These are fees if you're exiting a prior home loan agreement. In most cases now, there are no deferred establishment fees with home loans. So if you're looking at switching in a few years time and you're on a variable rate and there's no earlier payment fees, the discharge fees are all you're gonna pay. So it might only be a few hundred dollars. But fortunately, it's super easy to manage these fees and often you can get some of these waived. So talk to your mortgage broker and make sure you go through all the upfront fees and borrowing costs to make sure your budget works. Government fees. This is the secret sting. Whilst most people know and expect to pay stamp duty, which we'll cover in more detail shortly, there are some government fees that can add up to a few hundred or thousands of dollars. These include registration of mortgage. Now typically in Queensland, as an example, that's $197. Registration of discharge. Now this is removing the bank's name off the title and that costs once again $197. The old bank. Registration and transfers. Now this one ranges in a few thousand dollars. Now registration fees is the biggest thing. And unlike bank fees, there isn't any way to get a discount or ways of getting it waived. It is one of those things just to be aware of and make sure your broker factors them in upfront. These fees can cost a few hundred to a few thousand dollars and you definitely want to know about them. Stamp duty. Stamp duty is a state government tax. As such, the amount payable will vary from state to state. 
The dollar amount depends on the value of the property and it can be tens of thousands of dollars. The more you'll pay and it's on a bit of a sliding scale. A million dollar purchase can attract stamp duty up to $55,000. Again, depending on your state, depending if you're a first home buyer or not, it's sometimes waived up to certain purchase prices. We've got a bunch of other videos on this and also check out our stamp duty calculator which we'll include in a link below. But unfortunately, if you do have to pay stamp duty, there's no way to waive it. You just need to factor it in as part of your total deposit. Council and water rates. As you're probably aware, building and property owners pay council and water rates to state governments. But you may not be aware, you need to pay the person you're buying the property from for the remaining yearly or quarterly rates. Yeah, so for example, if you're settling a property in June and the previous owner has paid their rates until July, you're gonna have to pay them for that one month and it's payable on settlement. That's coming out of your pocket. The council and water rates do vary from suburb to suburb. So you just need to be aware that there may be some increased costs on this and factor in maybe a few hundred dollars in extra change you're gonna need when it comes to settlement. Now your solicitor will take care of all these details at settlement and you can see what happens through the settlement breakdown that your solicitor will provide. Home and contents insurance. Home and contents insurance is incredibly important cost that you need to put in place as soon as you sign a contract on your home. Now remembering this point is if you're buying a detached home. If you're buying a strata property, a townhouse, a unit, etc., then your home insurance effectively is covered by the body corporate, the strata, by everyone else. So this only does apply if you're buying a standalone home. There is often confusion about who is responsible for the property insurance after the period from signing a contract to settlement. According to fine law, in Queensland, contrary to other states, the standard terms of a contract usually provide for the risk in the property to pass from seller to buyer, not from the settlement date, but from 5 p.m. on the first business day after the date that the seller signs the contract. So in other words, when you sign a contract on a property in Queensland, you are responsible as the buyer for the insurance from 5 p.m. on the date after signing the contract. It's incredibly important to know this. The good news is you can go online and get home and contents insurance really quickly or speak with your mortgage broker to help arrange that. Now it is important to remember every state is different, so speak with your solicitor and when they're reviewing the contract, they'll let you know if this is something you need to put in place. Income protection insurance. Income protection insurance is an optional cost, but it's one worth considering. It allows you to keep up with your mortgage repayments for a certain period of time in the event that there's a loss of income through injury or illness. You can also look at mortgage protection insurance that specifically covers your loan repayments if an event happens. So let's move on to the fees after settlement. Moving in connection costs. Depending on how far you're moving and how much stuff you need to move, removal fees can add up to a few thousand dollars to your upfront costs when buying a home. So if you're moving locally in the same city, you may need to set aside anything from 300 bucks if you're getting your mates and a bit of a truck together to up to three and a half thousand. If you're moving into state, removalists can cost several thousand dollars more to do this. And from experience, you kind of get what you pay for with movers. If you're really cheap, which I did on my most recent move, you end up with a lot of scratch walls and a bit of bump furniture. So keep that in mind. I know with Nathan's move a couple of years back, we ended up renting a ute and did it ourselves and it was cheap, but it's a long, it's not that much fun. <laughs> but it is a cost you need to think about. You also need to account for connections, for example, for utilities in your home. But there is good news here. With increased competition in the energy market, you might be able to get those connection costs waived if you sign up for a 12-month contract. Phone around and check out what they can do. Strata fees, body corporate. As we mentioned before, you'll need to pay strata fees, also known as strata levies, on a quarterly basis if you bought a unit or apartment. These fees are used to fund ongoing expenses throughout the complex. Things like cleaning, gardening, electricity, and building maintenance, as well as plumbing, all covered through these special levies. You are responsible to make these contributions every three months until you sell the property. You may need to pay additional levies if a larger project comes up. Your strata report will give you an idea of the quarterly fee and it should give you a good idea if there's any special levies that are likely to come up in the near future. Renovation or ongoing property maintenance. If you need to renovate your home before moving in, you could be in for some surprise costs. Now I've covered in a video before my Gold Coast renovation that started from a $30,000 budget and ended up costing me over $100,000. These budgets can blow out. But it's also worth thinking about ongoing maintenance for a property. Things like a quick coat of paint or minor renovations should be pretty easy to budget for. But if you're planning on something massive, then you need to get an estimate from a builder. If the house has timber outside, just factor in. 
giving that a freshen up every five or 10 years, gardening, maintenance, all those little things can add up. So you just wanna have a bit of buffer set aside just in case. Changes to repayment. What goes down must go up and interest rates are no different. Don't fall into the trap of assuming interest rates will be this low forever. We're at historic lows for interest rates, but they will eventually go up. Remember that the average mortgage is a 30 year term. In the early 90s, interest rates were 17%. So it pays to keep this in mind. If interest rates go up and you're currently only making the minimum required repayments on your home loan, you'll need to pay more. So for example, if interest rates went up by 1%, you need to pay an extra $200 per month on an average home loan of $300,000. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit us up with a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time.